Hello and welcome back to Disco Elysium. So, we need to head in here and we need to go and talk to the union workers to find out if they know what's going on. And they should all be here now because I think they were all arriving at 4 o'clock, which is perfect, you know? Absolutely perfect. So, in here we go. Can I go in here now? Encyclopedia. The theme on that pinball machine is standard royalist theme used on everything from pinball cabinets to full flavor cigarettes. Or is Hallmarks? Cling to a picture book version of the past century, waiting for the king to come back and cast out all the profiteers and homosexuals. Basically, imagine a yellow plastic crown with liquor a brand emblazoned on it. Um... Yeah, the idea of a king and a century gone is pretty fascinating. The sentiment is called Anticentennial nostalgia, pining of her time before the turn of the century. It's common even now, after 50 years. Oh, okay. I'm sure they said it was open at 4. What's up with that? Did I not say it was open after 4? Uh, maybe I'm wrong. Okay. Well, that's incredibly possible that I was wrong, but I thought this was going to open up. Okay, well, I'm wrong then, so I'm going to leave. This is already shut, which is the other thing. Okay. Um, where do we need to go? I mean, that's a question we've probably asked many a time by now, but... This Doom building, search for a malignant entity. Ah, yes, well, did we already speak to Kuno about this? I can't remember. Let's go speak to Kuno and see what he has to say. Hey, Kuno. Fuck, there's Kuno here! Hmm, we still can't do that empathy. Or at least we've got a very low chance of that empathy. Uh, I have more questions about the body? No. Nope. Uh, I have more questions about the crime scene? Yeah, okay, see ya. What about Kuno's friends? Does they have anything to say? Just to be sure. I'll die before I squeal, pig! Alright, see you later. They're exactly the same as they were. Okay. So we still don't know what's up with the malignant entity in here. But we haven't really got a lot of clues because we can't open the uh, thing that we need to open. Okay. So we'll leave that alone for just now. Uh, let's continue heading along here. Yeah. Ooh, what's this? Oh, we can't look at it yet. Okay, that's fine. This coin-operated viewer has been banged up inoperable. Oh, there's two people here. Hey, what's up? Um, blue-faced man? Have you no shame whining about your back every time you bring out the measuring tape? Oh, he's not blue-faced. He's just got a blue cap on. I understand. My name. You're a man with a fork in a world of soup. Please, let's just try to enjoy the game, all right? Oh, they're playing bowls. Okay. I am trying to, but you keep breaking my concentration. You're old. I can see that. We're both old. Now, stop grabbing your ass like it's a girl. Physical instrument. These men are playing balls. This is a ball game. Grab a ball and play it. Don't ask questions. Shoot first. Ask questions never. Um, shouldn't I ask what game it is first? No, no, you got this. There's a ball. You're the game. Um, well, with my high and eye hand eye coordination, let's go. Oh, that's a success. You are immediately surprised by the ball's lack of weight. No matter, you'll make it work. Feel the ball. The cold metal ball is surprisingly smooth against your neck. It has a pattern on it. Probably a sponsored ball. Yours would only be covered with bumps of learning and scars of victory. Already your muscles are adjusting to the weight, the nervous system calibrating until you and the ball have merged into a single entity. The man ball is ready. Take in the surroundings. A chilly breeze ruffles your hair as you stand there, feet firmly planted. All sounds, smells, even the wind 
everything fades until the only thing that is left is the union of man and ball. Alas, time for a last glance inward. Who am I? An embodiment of pure motion, a fine-tuned locomotor running at maximum efficiency. Some would still say you're a cop, but I guess we're beyond that now. The inertia can be contained no more than a bullet leaving a gun. Let go. Be the bullet. Um... Is that the game? Matt! The old soldier shouts in outrage. Border the Matt! A whorehouse of shit? It wasn't a whorehouse of shit. The shot was at least 23 meters. Probably 24, and then some. Nothing to be embarrassed about. Oh, this is shot put! Okay, see, I think I, I thought it was balls where you were trying to get them to hit. All, uh, you were trying to get it all to go near the pin or something, but... No, I guess it was shot putt. Okay. What the hell is your problem? Um... Not weak right triceps, that's for sure. I do not... I don't care if you're a cop. You do not just ruin someone's game. It's so goddamn disrespectful. Wait, what? Oh, it was. You have vandalized our game, son. He tries to calm himself. We can't play petonk with five bulls. Oh, pet, uh, petonk. I understand. I, well, so you know, I'm just going to say I thought it was shot putt. Well, it damn... Well, isn't. It's petonk. The man snaps, raising his voice again. You have ruined our petonk game. We want our ball back. Take it easy, Rene. The jolly one tries to defuse the situation. This is just a misunderstanding, isn't it, officer? No harm done. Of course there's harm done, you orange slug. The heel of his cavalry boot slams into the ground. You owe us one. You owe us a goddamn ball. Um. I don't have a ball, but will this do? My shot pup. Ball I found earlier? Will this? He falls silent and stares at the ball. No, it will. Goddamn not. Uh, thank you, Avasa. Uh, the jolly man quickly takes the ball and bounces this in his hand. This is something. Honestly, I think it's better than our old ball, even. Mon do. He mumbles, rubbing his temples. All right, all right, fine. What do you want, officer? Yes, why did you come here? It's unlikely they know anything about the murder. Um, did, do you know anything about the man hanged in the backyard of the whirling in rags? Unfortunately, I don't, he shrugs. Unlike most of the locals, I have no qualms about assisting law enforcement, but this affair has passed me by completely. And most of the locals? In Martinez, the union is the law. So you can't really blame them. But you don't have a problem with cops. Cop is a pejorative term. I don't have a problem with policemen. On the contrary, I admire the effort to bring order to our streets. He doesn't know about the crime. Your time is better spent discussing politics. What about police women? I'm confident they are indispensable in regard to all the paperwork and other administrative duties. Um, There are no duties RCM women couldn't handle out. But you must agree that the nature in her infinite wisdom has made men more fit to perform certain more challenging tasks, don't you, officer? No, I don't think there's any evolutionary inequality at play here. Really, officer, he smirks, match an average woman against an average man in a dark alley, and we'll see who comes out on top. Gender equality is very noble, very modern idea, but in real life, primal roles prevail. But I do not wish to discuss this matter further. You seem to be playing in a crater? Yes, the man nods. 
The terrain here provides an interesting variety to a familiar game. Do you know uh, what created it? I do. He nods, straightening his back. Fire from heavy artillery. Why do I get the feeling he's the one who shot the artillery? Okay, it's a crater left by artillery fire, but why? Why what? Why was heavy artillery used? Because that's what happens when communards hijack your country, execute your supreme leadership, and turn your capital into a slaughterhouse. You use heavy ordnance to clean up your home. Um, did you use artillery fire against them? Sadly, no. It was foreigners who brought them to their knees. We fought valiantly, too valiantly, so valiantly we got licked. He's at, at squeezing a bowl in his fist. Should have fought dirty, like they did with this suicide sex cult propaganda and the mad anarchist woman strapped to shrapnel bombs. We didn't, though. We lacked caliber. God bless him, but the suzerain's cannons simply weren't big enough. It was probably a bit more complicated than that. Why shell them here in Martinez? Because this place is the damned beachhead, he says, pointing to the bay. I do soften the gummies up first. The beachhead? Yes. He nods, inspecting you with some disdain. The military coordinated amphibious landing to take back Revachol. Martinez was used as one of the three footholds in the Revachol during Operation Death Blow in 08. The other two are off in Stella Maris and the Delta. He points northeast. I'm going to nod thoughtfully and turn to look northeast. This here is blood ground, where the Coalition boots first made landfall and cleaned those rabbit dogs out, most likely. He says, looking down at the soil. We're playing. Betonk on the mangled corpses. Blood ground. The other one shakes his head. You got old Vene going there. Like he isn't angry enough already. Um, okay. Hold on, the coalition? Mmm, he grunts. Don't get me wrong, officer. I hate those foreign dogs. But the enemy of my enemy and all that, they're a, they're a, le a lesser evil. Okay. Is that why everything is so bombed out? Damn the right, son. They laid the fire of hell on this city before they stormed it. And it worked, too. There's a strange gleam in his eyes. The rest of the city got cleaned up, but Martinez, they kept it as a... A monument. A dark shadow runs across his face. Oh, a dark shadow runs across his face. And now the Union Socialists are practically running the place. Well, it's your own goddamn fault, the jolly man marks. You, we, the coalition, Revachol, whoever you want to blame, never finished the job. Officially, the party never surrendered. Of course, they still hold influence. You don't even do begin to truly understand the players on the table, let alone the specific circumstances surrounding the... He stops mid-sentence and turns to you. Oh, what do you think? Thinking men have opinions on things. Present one. Um... As so it should be, soft socialists paving the way for hard working class. Foreign powers cleaned up our mess and now they rule us. Um, the coalition seems quite capable, actually. Commies just don't understand how money works. You know what? I'm going to say foreign powers cleaned up our mess and now they rule us. I'm going to shake my head in shame. I'm sorry it had to be them. He looks down at his boots. After eight years of fighting those hyenas, boiling cats for food and drinking piss in the mountains. I would have referred the right honourable king, Gilumain, to return to Revachol. Even if that damned clown Frizzle had risen from this grave and led us, sadly that was not the case. Instead, all that is just holy and beautiful in the world was wiped away, and now it's neon signs with toothpaste ads everywhere, or an influence pledging, uh, 
peddling garbage and stupid music on the radio. He sighs. This is just what the commies wanted. This is the plan all along. This is what they wanted to replace the rule of suzerain with. Who is this Frizzle? Damn Frizzle. He was the king we couldn't protect. The carabiners failed him and the crown. The old veteran falls silent and massages his chest. He died in the hands of the Hoi Paloi in a very public execution. He slouches as he says that. It makes him seem smaller, admitting they left the king to the mob. He mentioned Gilam... Gilamium? Somebody told me how to pronounce that properly, and I will do that as soon as I remember to open the pronunciation before a video. A true king in both blood and mind. Lead Revishal, led Revishal before Frizzle. He would have been better, but the damned commies drove him into exile. Some manner of self-deceit uh, is read present in his thinking. It sounds like this Gilaum, Gila yeah, Gila um, uh, abandoned him and he doesn't want to admit it. What exactly is a suzerain? A suzerain is king. Has everyone forgotten already? Ian slowly nods and says to himself, They've forgotten already. There's no use talking to you. You were still in daddy's balls when it happened. When we took our last stand against the filth and rode the cavalry straight into gunfire. So I can use my composure to find what makes this um, old soldier stand so proud. Or, is there anything you can tell me about this rifle? Yeah, okay. It's a bell, my grave, he says, taking the rifle. 4.46 caliber, breech loading, revachol made, good weapon, accurate and reliable. This one's inoperable. The bolt spring is missing and the mechanism is jammed shut. Still a beauty. He adds, handing the rifle back. Where did you find it? Um, I found it in the basement there. Out of the bookshop. I'm not surprised. He looks at the building. There are probably lots of forgotten wartime weapons lying around here. Back in the day, everyone had something stashed away. As for the rifle, I don't know what else to tell you. He shrugs. These BM446 are an antique. No one uses them anymore. The ammunition is impossible to find. I'm tempted to try that, but thank you for your time. Uh, what about uh, Rene? Oh, I have really outdone myself. Oh, this is divine. Yes, that's what you need, Gaston. More padding on that fat ass of yours. I hope your heart gives out. Uh, René, it's the little pleasures. Life doesn't need to be a, a struggle. Oh, hello, visitor. How might I be of assistance on this fine day? This is Gaston, not René. René was the person we were speaking to previously. Um, Looks delicious. Can I have a bite of that? Pointing to his sandwich. I'm sorry, officer, but I really don't share food, he says and quickly adds. Nothing personal, it's just the principle. The only one you have. Please, man, can I just have a bite? And believe me, officer, I wish I could help you, but this sandwich to keep my blood sugar stable. He, he's squirming, avoiding your gaze. Oh, sorry, but I need this sandwich to keep my blood sugar stable. He's squirming, avoiding your gaze. In my age, you need to pay attention to these things. Please, friend, just share it. Fuck off, it's mine. He jerks away, immediately startled by his own reaction. Uh, sorry, officer. I'm sorry, I didn't mean it in a bad way. He continues cautiously. But the sandwich is mine. I'm not going to share it. When the dissidents come to rape our country, he hides, but... Try to get a bite of his dear sandwich and he gets the claws. Your special kind of vermin, Gaston. And try and convince him to uh, relinquish his sandwich. We'll try in a minute. Tell me, what do you know about the dead man? Let me think. He looks to the clouds wistfully. I heard someone was hanged and left on a tree for a week, but that's all I know, really. Come on, you must have heard something. No, officers, I'm sorry. I really would like to assist, he adds, smiling apologetically. You are both good guys, I can see that. Then help them, you wimp. Reproach fills his eyes. 
You have plenty of shoulder with that gosh caviar in the union. Someone must know something. He means the caviar uh, socialists. Caviar socialists? Anyway. I wish I could, but I don't know anything. His cheeks turn red. I always keep my nose clean and don't gossip. Everyone knows and respects that. Odd, he doesn't seem to be lying. There's something off here. That's like this bit you're holding back. I'm not, he assures you. I'm not even any what. Of course he's holding back, the carabiner crosses his arms. His mouth is so full of union, prick he can't even speak properly. Can I at least finish my fucking sentence before you piss on it? Is that okay, Rene? His eyes are furious. I'm not anyone important in the Union, I just know Everett. How do you know Everett? Everyone in Matanez knows that they are brothers, he says solemnly. I taught these boys human studies and history in the gymnasium. What do you know about history? The carabiner snaps at Gaston. You never witness history. Only heard about it years later when it had already moved on. You don't know history. The old man mumbles something under his breath and turns to face the sea. There he stands, proud, rigid alone, like a cracking marble statue. Let's try not to get caught in the... Lieutenant lowers his voice. Crossfire. Lest we leave riddled with bullet holes, this animosity is ancient. Are you a union member? Oh. His cheeks turn red again. In many ways, yes, like an honorary member. I attend meetings and parties, help with little things. Everard, Edgar, and the older Debardiers all know me. In many ways? Oh, yes. So you're not an actual member? Not in the technical sense. His eyes fix on the balls in the crater. I don't have a vote or a membership card, but Everard... Everard keeps me on the payroll just for the little things. So that's what it was before, him hiding something. He tries to make it look like he's a big deal in the Union, but now the illusion is disintegrating before your and Rene's eyes. He doesn't know anything, because no one tells him anything. He's an outsider. Of course, he's not a member. He's not a member of anything. I knew that. He frowns. He's a weather vane. Points to where the wind blows and tries to look important. I hate the socialist rabble. He continues. But even siding with them is better than living your entire life on the fence, never committing to anything. Pick a damn side already. What are these little things you do for ev- uh, for Everart? Or for- for- Everart? Everart. Uh, writing work mostly. He smiles. Occasionally he needs something written and I happen to have a way with words, people say. What kind of things do you write from? Oh, nothing official, I assure you. Just essays for the newspapers about matinees, how things are and how co they could be. Everart and I have these long talks where... Where he tells his little penman exactly what to say. It's kami propaganda, plain and simple. You should be ashamed of yourself. Are you a caviar socialist? The old man starts laughing. Oh, 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 oh. I don't even consider myself a regular socialist. Politics are not really something I involve myself in, officer. So you are a weather vine. I prefer highly adaptable myself. He chuckles merrily. Oh, oh but it has a better ring to it, don't you think? Mon dieu. The carabiner open closes his eyes and looks like he's never going to open them again. Thanks, that's all for now. No, thank you. He nods, smiling wide. But being consummate professionals, you left this case wrapped up in no time. Can I have your sandwich? Ooh. A man so principled about his sandwich calls for a principled approach. Time to get political. What is political? This right here is political. Um. Okay. Your blood sandwich is the tool of the oppressors designed to keep the proletariat docile. What? The lieutenant gives you a sharp. What the press is? I'm not going to listen to this gummy cuntier. He utters through clenched teeth and turns his back to you. Huh? The jolly man scratching his head in bewilderment. He doesn't understand the situation. Um. 
Let, let me ask you, comrade, did you make this sandwich yourself? Yes, officer. He proudly displays his culinary mi miracle. It is magnificent. Oh, still the overabundance this sandwich embodies is inherently evil. I don't understand how my sandwich good. He starts but falls silent. Wouldn't you rather have a proper sandwich, a sandwich with a soul? I would rather just have this one, officer. He avoids her eyes. It's really good. Tell this lost comrade what the people's sandwich would be like. Distill the essence of the working man in a sandwich. But imagine a sandwich, absolutely minimal in design, sleek, efficient, simple. The skepticism emanating from the merry senior could be sensed all the way to the semi, uh, for the seminine aisles. He's not imagining it. Um, melting butter, yellow like the sun shining on the backs of the workers in the fields. I don't eat worker food, he blurts out, immediately regretting it. Look, officer, I like different classic food. Fine dining, not the worker backs. Please, just drop it. Okay, so I need to put points into rhetoric to unlock anything more there. What are you over here? Oh, I got stuff to speak about in a second. Tire tracks leading to the roof. The slush and rain has almost washed them off. Hey, piss! Um... I'm gonna look around. Psst. Hey, you! Who, me? Yes, you. Word in the street is you're starting to... Uh, you're starting... Word in the street is you're ready to start building communism again. Again? Yes, you're ready to start building communism again. You've built it before. They've built it before. Hasn't really worked out yet, but neither has love. Should we just stop building love, too? Um... Love has worked out really well for me. I'm a love winner. Good. We need more tender men like you building gargantuan communism. Word on the street is it's going to be 10,000 larger. 10,000 times larger than any communism previously attempted by human beings. Is that right? How come there's word on the street? You keep saying things like down with the bourgeoisie, eat the rich, sodomize the landowners, impale all people who have more than 25 riel in their pockets, literally murder all human beings regardless of their political beliefs, that kind of stuff. Um, I haven't said anything like that. Okay, not in so many words, but don't deny it. You're about to rip off the mask of social democracy and reveal the monstrous seven-eyed lamb of global communism that will devour and uh, masticate mankind. Everyone can see that. So, tell me, do you have any questions before we fire up the big communism builder, or do we get right down to it? Wait, what is this communism even about? Failure. It's about failure. I don't do failure. Of course you do. You are failure. You are communism. Absolutely vanquished, beaten, curb stomped, shat on. While everyone else is out partying, having a callous laugh, you will reverse the fortune of the workers in the world. You alone, against every living thing, against every human alive, 800 trillion real in the hands of the impossibly well-organized ruling class, towering city blocks of bank men who have the ears of prime ministers, million-headed armies of nations, and the love of your own mother. You, against the atom, the charm, and the spin, where the whole world failed, matter failed to bend to human will, human will failed to get out of bed and tie its laces, you alone, single-handedly, will rebuild the dreams of the working class. You are the last communist. Now get to work, comrade. So I can either opt in or opt out. Do you want to start building communism or not? I guess so, I'm going to roll up my sleeves and start building communism. Oh yeah, get the firing squads and the animal wagons ready. Wait, what? Firing squads? You didn't say anything about those. Too late to back out now, you can't make an omelette without breaking a few million eggs. Alright, let's roll up our sleeves further and breathe in the pristine air. So I've gained a thought. Apparently you can do multiple thoughts at once, I was told. So, Mazovian Social Economics. So for three hours, I would get minus two visual calculus. Well, that's not great. People think communism was some crazy idea that had its comeuppance 40 years ago. A fever that shoot the world, never to return again. They were right, until he woke up today. A spiritual corpse responsive only to the call of Commodore Red, prostitutes, and Kras Mazov. For him, communism is still a thing. He will single-handedly uh, raise the commune of O2 from the oceanic trench where it has been resting, covered in ghosts and seaweed. 
He is the big communism builder. Come witness his attempt to rebuild communism in the year 51. You know what? Sure. Sure. I'll do that. Oh, and I can forget this. Oh, you can only have a limited number of thoughts at once. Oh, okay. Aha. And then you have to spend skill points to unlock. Okay. I see. To unlock more than, like, three thought thoughts at once. That's interesting. Okay. Well, in here, what do I want to level up? Well, what checks do we have available? What, what things am I looking for in checks? Map. Is there anything I need? Um... Well... If I get power perception, I can move the pile of Eternite. If I get more phys... Uh, if I get more endurance, I can get the hanged man, maybe. Empathy, I can get Kuno. Composure, I can discover what's up with Rene. And maybe some empathy. Why not? Understand others, work your mirror neurons. Empathy breaks into the souls of others. Um, and forces you to feel what's inside. It enables you to notice social cues many others may miss. Perhaps a hidden sadness you could coax out a little more. A strange joy from someone who should be bereaved, or a hidden resentment that uh, could return to harm you later. At high levels, empathy really puts you in other people's shoes. You'll cry for their sorrows, punch walls to re relieve their angers, and be an even more unstoppable cop. With low empathy, however, you'll be an ungain you'll be ungainly beasts, unable to talk to anyone without upsetting them. Okay, let's be a little bit empathetic. Nice. Uh, I'm gonna accept changes in clothes. We now have some empathy. Now, there was something over here I could do, right? It was. Wait, stop. Take a step this way. There we are. Uh, the spirited chirps and clicks of swallows fill the air. Hello. Right, Rene. The purity of snow always reminds me of the purity of a man's soul. If he's got principles. Alright. What about this old soldier makes him stand so proud? All you observe is a veteran refusing to let go of the past in his old uniform. This is not uncommon. He catches your glance and nods. This is the uniform of the Royal Carabiners in service to Frizzle the First. Yil Amin, the Lion, and the Valiant King Philippe the Fifth before him. Don't you mean Frizzle the Vun? You do not speak his name, Craven, although he was a clown. Yet, he turns back to you. But he was our clown, ours to ridicule and ours to mourn. There's something you missed. You'll get to it. Don't worry. Thank you for your time. Alright, we gotta go speak to Kuno. Although I should have done the check and then spoken to Kuno, but that's okay. Enormous bowls worthy of a real man. <laughs> Some great tectonic forces crack the pavement like an eggshell. Okay. Let's go see what our check's like with um, Kuno now. Maybe we can understand him. Fuck this Kuno kid! Seventeen percent. Let's go. Ooh, he's on your crime scene, bossing you around, and he's been here for some time too. This is where he hangs out. You have to get more out of him. He could be useful. Um, hey Kuno, listen. I know this boundary pushing thing is new to you, but it's old news for all us grown-ups. Get your snout out of Kuno's ass. He waves you off. Kuno knows how hard Kuno pushes it. Kuno pushes it at hard level. You should give up, Popo, or the Kun will keep fucking it out of you. Are you okay, Kuno? She looks worried. The Kun has her confused. That went wrong. He took it as a compliment. Then he had a minor seizure. Okay, I'm off. Okay. We didn't get anything from our empathy. It almost feels like a wasted skill point at this point, but that's okay. Uh, I'm going to continue heading left, because, you know what? I know there's things over to our right, but there's a lot of things over to our left. Oh, bench. The damage looks like it could be caused by an earthquake. The worn and beaten wooden planks of the bench do not look overly comforting. Hmm. The lieutenant looks down the street. We can sit on benches after we've solved the murder. Let's go. 
You revisit the bench if you ever need to pass the time when Lieutenant Kit Suragi is gone. Ah, so like, if I need to sleep. I got it. Oh, somebody there. What have we got up here? To Roundabout North. To uh, Capiside Apartments, Martinez Pier. Okay, why don't we look at this side first. The ad reads, broken window. Tibbs has windows. Is that a rock? Coin-operated viewer. Never mind. This coin-operated viewer is facing southwest. Its coin slot is full of fossilized bubble gum, rendering the machine permanently inaccessible. I'm going to look inside. A thick layer of graffito covers the lens as you spell out the words O-N-U-C, written on the other side with an N and C scribbled backwards. That's Kuno on the lens. I'm going to shift my focus to the background. Under the graffito, a sea of blues and greys appears. Uh, behind the water lies a coast studded with concrete and reeds. On it, a church sits on stilts, lanky, weather-worn wooden planks, and an X-shaped cross atopping its tower. You know this to be the star of uh, Pericarnassus, or the Chiro, the central symbol in the Pericarnassian faith, uh, church. A star, a great moral height to be strived towards. The church looks old and weather-worn. There are no lights in the windows. Around this large wooden building, you see chunks of sea ice gathered in the beach and a small tent set up in the ice. Poor little viewer. The metal feels cold and wet under your palm. It looks unhygienic. I'm going to say vandalism and shake my head. Probably some kids. The lieutenant inspects the rig slot. A simple but clever solution to ruining a co coin-operated viewer. It took ingenuity. Okay, we'll leave that there. If you had a bag in your hand, perhaps you could light these bottles and sell them. How about this one? This coin-operated viewer is facing south. The instruction manual says to insert 25 centums and pull the handle while looking inside. Then use the focus knob to zoom in if necessary. Why place a tourist attraction in the middle of such poverty? What's a tourist attraction doing here? There was a revitalization project in 49. A design studio tried restoring Martinez to its pre-war glory. Lieutenant looks around and concludes, It didn't stick. What happened? They got as far as the street lamps and the statue on that intersection. Then something went sour. He lowers his voice. I suspect something was... Everett, Claire, the union leader. He muscled them out. It's how it usually goes around here. Okay. Can't we do something about it? We should have done something about the union ten years ago. That ship has sailed, officer. I'm going to start a coin. Your money disappears in the coin slot. A clunk, the ring of metal. I'm going to pull the handle and look inside. The curtains on the display open. You lean in to catch the view. It's blurry. Different blues and greens. In the middle of the shimmer stands a drab grey shape, like a ghost. I'm going to turn the knob to focus my vision. The lens shift. The ghost sharpens into an, in, uh, an islet of the bay. In the ruins, a man-made structure is visible. A half-sunken sea fort. Its concrete almost reconquered by nature. It looks as if it was abandoned quite some time ago. Nothing but a rotten tooth remains of the anti-aircraft tower. A lonely birch tree grows out of it. Its leaves ripped from it by the winter wind. Hang in there, little one. The brave little birch tree seems to weigh back in the wind. There are ruins of some kind of building there. Really? I don't have the eyesight to make it out. Lieutenant takes off his glasses and cleans them. Okay. Let's head down here, then, and speak to the drunk. Or we can just take this. What's he got? Yellow plastic bag, Freet. Equip this to collect tear from the streets. Okay. Um, you hear the distant squall of seabirds. What's up with this guy? I have seen things here, and... Uh, okay. I'm going to equip this bag. Oh, what's it? it has something to say on it as well. This yellow bag, Freet Sit, has written on it in dynamic, forceful manner that implies great prices. 
As you, track, as you crack it open, a multi gust of air flies in your face. Smells of yeast and beer. Perfect place for tear. Okay. Blast it tear. I'll take it out of the bin, yeah. Um, we might have a way to make some money. What have we got over here? A splatter of bullet holes lines the wall. The sight of bullet holes stirs something in you, making you forget the lieutenant's surname. Uh, I'm going to look closer first. The fading marks are too uh, degraded to draw any forensic conclusions, just chips in the sandstone. Oh, but I guess if we had, if we still had our um, visual calculus, we might have been able to do something there. Kim, look, bullet holes. Oh, yeah, he looks around. Someone has been shot, we're cops, we should solve this. There, he looks up to the wall. Those are old. Oh, you mean like from the revolution? Yes, the one that happened half a century ago. He blinks. These bullets were fired during the revolution and do not warrant an investigation by officers of civil law. Uh, what can you tell me about this revolution? Not much. I don't have a fresh perspective on it. Shall we go? Okay. Let's go. That's fine. Ooh, what's up with this? Oh, money. Sure. I'll take money. All we need is like another 170 and we're good to go. Oh, but now I can see all of these uh, plastic bottles. Yeah. Of course I'll collect them all. And we'll go bin rummaging for some more. Ooh, a whole glass one. Nice. We're cleaning up the streets. That's what police officers should do, right? I think we've got this. Yeah. Okay. Ooh, there's more up here. Collect all the bottles. Nothing along the sides. Ooh, more bottles. Yeah, we'll have those. A lonely cormorant surveys the sea, indifferent to your approach. There's blood. What's this? Oh, it's round the back. This is a wall on the side of an apartment building. Uh, I try conceptualization, I guess. Why am I looking at this wall? You have no clue, it's just a wall. So many walls over Martinez. Weather worn. Racked. They're paint, peeling. Okay. Money and magnesium. Nice. Get another one of those. Hey, what's up? I'm on this side of the wall now. Are you trying to sneak up on me? Come to slit my throat in my sleep. Logic error. She's not sleeping right now. Pigs come to take me out. Trying to snuff me out. Are you sleeping right now? Don't get fucking clever with me, you pig. You think you're so clever. She hisses. Okay. And now we're around the back. A garden hose. This won't be much use until the snow melts. Oh, there's somebody up there as well. I'm not going to head right in, but we'll have a look. Chairs and tables eaten by rot, rain and rot. Another splattering of bullet holes in this wall. We've got orange bum hat. Up reaction speed, lowered rhetoric. And then we have some health. Okay. Uh, an orange beanie with a couple of big ass holes in the side. It looks like it might have been used as a mask during an armed robbery. We could lose Encyclopedia for that, but I just want to see what it looks like. Oh no, that's not us. No, no, no. We'll stick with our hat. Definitely. Just a closed door, but you look at it suspiciously. Okay, these barrels are half full of rainwater. Let's head up here and speak to uh, the guy up this way. Must be another way into the building. Oh, okay. What about heading in this way? Locked as well. You know, probably good idea to keep doors locked. Somebody might just try and walk in. Okay. Head over here and we've got this thing. Oh, another plastic bottle. Wonderful. What's this? A signal blue navy coat. Raises suggestion, lowers half light. What's half light? 
Uh, Aflight lets the body take control, threatens people. Cool for high strung investigators, shoot now, ask questions later, cops, surprise haters. Half Light is your fight or flight response. It enables you to sense the way situations are about to turn. It injects palpable fear into your heart. Fear that urges you to act before it's too late to act ever again. It's fear that makes you frighten others. It's the aggression that lets you squeeze every last drop of information out of a witness. At high levels, Half Light would make you ultra attuned to the world. It's perpetual fear of your own shadow, of someone else's name, of scent. You'll be ready always to pounce and physically interrogate passers by. At low levels, however, you'll find your survival instinct is lacking and your methods limp wristed. Those who respect violence will not respect you. Okay. So we got that. We also got plus one suggestion. And I think we've read suggestion before, but I'm just going to find it just so we can see what our suggestion is. Ah, there it is. Char men and women um, play the puppet master. Oh no, I don't think we have. Diplomats, charmers, psychopaths. Um, suggestion urges a soft power approach. People think they want what you want. You've already won. This skill enables you to implant ideas into the minds of others. You make the citizens like you more. You can make gangsters turn on each other. You can make crime rings that have been broken. Many crime rings have been broken by just a little doubt. Actually, I think we have read that. Okay. So what does our current outfit give us? Current outfit gives us esprit de corps, which is kind of like a... That's police sense. Um, I could see a switching. Yeah. Let's switch over. I mean, that looks horrible, obviously. But, it does improve our suggestion, and Half-Flight was already fairly low. So that's good. What else have we got? Um, inside the frame of a motor uh, in repair, and a motorcycle in repair, and uses the tools to disassemble it. Okay. Grab that. What have we got here? Capeside Apartments, Rue de Saint Ghislain, roundabout north. There's a girl up there. Did she spill the paint? And then there, that person saying, "We gotta keep walking. We can't speak to them down here, can we?" Oh, we can. The streets will flow red once more. A great torrent rushing down Rue d'Espérance. You wait and see. The girl stares at the sailboat by the pier. The streets will not flow red with anything. Who are you? I'm Cindy the fucking Skull. What else do you want to know? Date of birth? Blood type? The last time I was tested for Hep C? Um, we just want to know your name, little lady. No need to get uh, defensive. And here I was, trying to be polite. Just can't win with you pigs. Despite the sass, she puts the brush aside. Um, what are you doing to the wall? Can't you tell? I'm painting a beautiful mural. An aero graffito, visible from low orbit. She studies the wall, suddenly pensive. I haven't really started it yet. I'm waiting for the right words. So you don't know what to write? Have you ever tried your hand at graffito? When faced with a blank wall, most people write unimaginative stuff like Pigs go home and Mona was here. We rarely see pigs around here though. Just Union Cads. My name's not Mona, so... She wants it to be something true and total. Why are you so committed to defacing the building? This place is severely lacking in havoc. Not even the occasional trash can, trash can fire to break up the tedium. I thought I'd mix it up, you know? Summon the forces of crime and social chaos with a wall-sized invitation. I have an opinion on this. Want to hear it? Yeah. Um. I love public art. Don't mind us. Keep doing what you're doing. Thanks. I'm not sure. I'm sure the inspiration will come to me now that I have an official RCM stamp of approval. She means the opposite. You've lessened her desire to deface the building. Um. What are you looking at? She nods disdainfully towards a woman performing maintenance on a boat docked next to the pier. Hatred? Disgust? It's impossible to tell which of the two is more present in her girlish features. The woman at the boat does not notice her staring. She hisses, A that ozone whore. Someone's got to keep an eye on her. Ozone is an archipelago two days travel away from Revishal. Its moneyed residents used to posh restaurants and upscale boutiques rarely have a reason to visit Martinez. Who is she? 
probably the Wild Pines rep. We should talk to her. He nods in her direction. She is a professional negotiator, though. I have the feeling she will be very cooperative while telling us nothing. You should take the lead, ask her unexpected questions, you know, do your thing, don't be afraid to get a bit wacky, throwing her off is our best bet. Good idea, piggies. Run along now, fuck her shit up good, impound that boat while you're at it. I'd like to watch her swim back to Ozone. Do you know anything about the recent murder? She wrinkles her nose. I ain't no snitch pig stain. Uh, go forth and forage in someone else's shit. No shortage of squealers in these parts. Actually, there is a shortage of people who want to talk to us in a normal, calm, informative manner. We weren't put on this earth to make your life pleasant, fucko. Well, catch you later, Cindy. Watch your back, oogulate. I got my eyes on you. Okay. We got over here. We have more plastic bottles. Do we have a way up here? Southwest entrance to the tenements. A sturdy metal door uh, guards the southwest entrance to the apartment building. It's locked. I'm gonna knock. The door rattles against your knuckles, but there's no response. Knock again. The door rattles again, but this time you hear an elderly woman's voice calling out from inside. Stop banging on the door. I'm not letting any more strangers inside. Hold on, who am I speaking to? It don't matter who I am. Now, go on, get out of here. This is the police. Open the door. The police? Everyone knows the police don't come round here. Uh, but I'm not joking. No, I already told you. I won't be responsible for any more strangers getting into the building. You keep saying more. Go check the backyard door. Maybe someone there will. She trails off, leaving the sentence unfinished. Backyard door. There must be another entrance to the east. Kim, tell her a real policeman. Madame. I assure you, we are real police officers. The lieutenant repeats dutifully. There's no reply, just faint sweeping sounds inside. Alright, well we'll leave that be then, for just now. We have this. Alright, we have these first. Ooh, magnesium. More morale. Like it. All these bottles. Kim. Come on now. Kim. You're in the way of the bottles. So what's this? This is docking reserve for residents of Rue de Saint Ghislaine. Okay. Well, I think with that, I'm going to end the episode here. Thank you for watching. And next time, we're going to speak to the person on the boat and see uh, what they're doing here. So thank you for watching. See you next time. Goodbye.